Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master on a daily basis. Thank you so much for joining me again today as we continue the theme we began yesterday about the gift of a problem. We looked at two passages, easy to remember, Acts 1-8, Acts 8-1, reversing it. In Acts 1-8, Jesus told his disciples, look, you're going to receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. It was Christ's purpose for the church to expand beyond Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the headquarters, the, the, the home of the church, the mother uh, city of the church. In fact, it's the capital of the Jewish world. And the Jew, the, the Christians, who were all formerly, they, they never stopped being Jews. Let me say that. They were Jewish Christians, wanted to remain in Jerusalem, park in Jerusalem, but they didn't. They would not expand to the place God wanted them to be. So guess what God did? God sent them a problem. Acts 1.8 says, I want you to be somewhere. They didn't do it. So God sends a problem to get them there. Acts 8.1 says, and Saul approved of their killing him. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church of Jerusalem. And, and all except the apostles were scattered. What scattered them to Judea and Samaria? What got them to the place where God wanted them to be? It says a great persecution, persecution, which means that it was a problem that God used to get his people where God wanted them to be. And since God is, is immutable and the same yesterday, today, and forever, God is still using problems, the, which can become a gift, to get us where God wants us to be. Sometimes one door will shut because God is getting ready to open another door. I want to very quickly give you four tools that you can expect God to use to get you where you are supposed to be or to help develop you. And here are the four tools in God's toolbox. God will say, okay, I wanna get you from Jerusalem to, to the uttermost parts of the world. I wanna expand you beyond a place you never imagined or anyone ever imagined for you. And here are the tools I'm gonna to use to get you there. And this is what God uses, people, people. You get developed, I get developed on the basis of the people that we have in our life. Sometimes God can use people negatively. That's what God did with the disciples. The persecution came from people that moved the disciples to the uttermost parts of the earth. And God wants you to move your life to the uttermost parts of possibilities. And God sometimes can use some negative people to, to hurt your feelings to get you there. And then God can use people in a very positive way, not just in a negative way, but a positive way because of the people we hang around. Listen, you cannot fly with eagles if you're running with turkeys. Bottom line, show me your friends. I'll show you your future. You need good relationships. And let me say this, good relationships are not automatic. You have to be intentional about your relationships. And once you've got a good relationship, Fight for that good relationship. Proverbs 27, verse 17 says this. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Notice what it doesn't say. It doesn't say peanut butter sharpens iron. It doesn't say jelly sharpens iron. It doesn't say uh, hot sauce. Pot. Put some hot sauce on an iron on an iron blade and that iron blade will get sharp. No, it doesn't say that. It says iron sharpens iron, rubbing against each other, sometimes friction creates greatness. So God, when God wants to develop you, uses people. Second thing God uses is, put this down, practice, habits, doing something over and over and over and over and over and over again. Discipline and practice. If you're going to develop, you cannot have your energies and your time scattered everywhere. You've got to focus. You've got to be a, Paul says, this one thing I do. You've got to be a one thing I do type of person. 
Um, many of us could be so much further if it were not for the distractions that we allow to come in our lives and the detours that we have taken. It takes practice, focus. First Timothy chapter four, verse seven says this, do not waste time. That's a good thing because once you waste time, you can't get it back. Arguing over godless ideas of wives' tales. Instead, here's the key word, train. That means practice. When you're training, train yourself to be godly. And you can put, take that word godly out because that's an elastic word. That can mean many things. Being godly is being the person God wants you to be. So train yourself. Once you know what God's purpose is for your life, train yourself. Practice. It is people. It is the ability to practice. Practice. Then here's another tool that God uses, a second, third P word, and that is, put it down, patience, patience. People practice patience. Now, when you think of patience, that means, it does not mean, when the Bible talks about patience, that doesn't mean just sitting around doing nothing, waiting for something to happen. It means doing your best, believing that if I can do my best and continue to do my best, God is going to work with me to make things happen. That's what it is. It is me doing what I can and trusting God to do what I can. not That's what patience is. It's not sitting around twiddling your thumbs um, and waiting for God to intervene without any uh, activity on your part. Patience is I keep on keeping on. I keep on struggling. I Keep on doing what I'm supposed to do. I keep on, and here's the word, enduring. Patience is another word for endurance. James chapter 5, verse 11 says this. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. It's the, 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 the Greek word is patience, macrothermos. It means persevered. You've heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. God will bring it about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. God uses patience or perseverance in order to develop us. So I've given you three words, people, practice, patience. And then the last word is based on the theme that we're talking about this week. And that's problems, problems. Acts 1 and 8 again. Jesus told the disciples to go to the ends of the earth, to the uttermost parts of the earth. And guess what? They got stuck in Jerusalem. So what it was it that got them out of Jerusalem to where God wanted them to be? Well, flip the script. Acts 1.8, Acts 8.1 tells us. Acts 8.1 says, uh, and Saul approved of their killing him. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem and all except the apostles were scattered. Throughout Judea and Samaria, it was a problem that God used to get them to where God wanted them to be. And when God's trying to get you somewhere, remember that in God's toolbox, God will use people, sometimes in a negative way, sometimes in a positive way. God will use practice. I'm training myself. I'm focused. God will use Patience. I keep on enduring and God's going to help me. I do what I can. Trust God to do what I can't. And then God uses problems. Now, listen, I'm talking to you about how what God uses in God's toolbox to get us where God wants us to be. So that means, listen carefully, that God uses people to fulfill God's purpose in our life. God uses practice to fulfill God's purpose in our life. God uses patience or perseverance to fulfill God's purpose in our life. God uses problems to fulfill God's purpose in our life. Listen, if you've got a problem you're dealing with right now, don't, let me, let's say, let me say it very, very clearly. I want you to hear me and hear me. If, if you don't hear anything else, I say, hear this. And that is that God uses problems to get us to where God wants us to be. Hallelujah. Don't focus on the problem. Focus on the purpose for the problem. Saying, God, are you using this problem because I'm stuck in Jerusalem and the ultimate purpose of this problem is to get me 
to where you want me to be. And if you ask God that, I think God's going to smile and say, you have finally matured to understand that I use multiple tools to develop you and to get you the way I want you to be. Let's pray together. Lord, our God, we thank you for never giving up on us. And when we give up on ourselves, you still love us and say, look, the best is yet to come. And someone who's having a problem, help them in their heart to believe by faith that the best is yet to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me again for another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, I'd like to extend an invitation to you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Email us and we will get back with you. New start at ssclive.org. I'd also like to encourage you to uh, purchase not only my new book, but any of the books that I have written. I've written a total of six books, and I think they'll be a tremendous blessing to you. Uh, Getting to the Promised Land is my latest book, and uh, you can go to my website, uh, Dr. Kevin W. Cosby, www.drkevinwcosby. Dot com. Again, thank you for being with me for another powerful point to ponder. And uh, we will pick up on this again tomorrow. But until then, don't forget during COVID-19, stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is in control. Love you much. See you tomorrow.